Hello and welcome back to Algebra, the video course where we talk a lot about group theory. And indeed, in today's part 9, we will talk about the important concept of a group homomorphism. However, as always, before we start with the definition, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. This is really important because only with your support I am able to create such videos like this one. And therefore I also want to give you bonus material with the link in the description. Ok, and with that I would say we can immediately start by considering a set G. And we have already learned, this set can be a group together with a binary operation. In fact, we only need a neutral element and all the inverses. This is what we have learned, this is the defining structure of a group. And the binary operation, as we have learned, just takes two elements and puts them to a third one. You put them together and you get a result. And now what we could also do is to consider a second group here on the right hand side. So let's call this one H and the binary operation star. So this one could be a completely different group, but it still has the same structure as G. And therefore, whenever we have a map between two groups, it would be nice if this structure could be conserved. So we want to have a map phi which preserves the structure of the group. So more precisely, this means that the binary operation should be conserved, the identity element and all the inverses. And if we have that, then this group structure preserving map is called a group homomorphism. So with this motivation, we can go to the exact definition. And it turns out that we don't need to require much to get such a structure preserving map. First, the only input we need here are two groups and let's call them G and H as before. And then we can just consider a map phi that sends the set G to the set H. So on the set level, this is already well defined, but now we go to the group level. And there we call it a group homomorphism if it satisfies the following property. We just take two elements A and B from the group G and put them together with the binary operation. And then obviously on the right hand side in H we have the two images phi of A and phi of B. And now these images can be combined with the binary operation in H. And there a group homomorphism is so nice that this is the same as the image of A with B. In other words, it does not matter if you first use the binary operation and then the map phi or first the map phi and then the binary operation. And obviously we want to have this nice property for all A, B in G. Ok, so this is the definition of a group homomorphism and now you see the only thing we require here is that the binary operation is preserved. First this looks a little bit strange because before we already said that we also want to preserve the identity and all the inverses. However, now the good thing is that this simple definition already implies the preserving of the additional structure. This means that we don't have to put it into the definition because we can already prove it by using this formula here. But before we do that, I first want to show you a very nice example of a group homomorphism. For this, the group G should be given by the real numbers together with the addition. And the group H should be given by the real numbers together with the multiplication. However, in this case you already know, if you want to have a group, we have to exclude 0. And then we have two well-defined groups which means we have an identity element and all the inverses. And please don't forget, here the number 1 is the identity element and there the number 0. And now let's define a very nice map phi from G into H. And this should be given by sending x to the exponential of x. In other words, we can say we take Euler's number to the power x. And this is a well defined map from G into H because we will never hit 0 with the exponential function. And there we can simply check if the group homomorphism property is satisfied. 
So let's say we take two elements x and y and combine them with the binary operation in g, which simply means that we add the numbers. And then the outcome with phi is simply e to the power x plus y. So this is the left hand side here, which means we can also look at the right hand side and then compare it. Indeed, the right hand side means that we have to use the binary operation in h, so we have the multiplication here. So what we have is e to the power x times e to the power y. And now we recognize that the left hand side and the right hand side are actually the same by the basic exponent rule. This should not be so surprising because this is the fundamental property of the exponential function. And now we get a different formulation for that because it's simply given by a group homomorphism. More precisely, the translation from the addition into the multiplication. Moreover, here you see something crucial as well. A group homomorphism does not have to be surjective at all. So you don't have to hit all the group elements on the right hand side. However, as we have already discussed before, if we hit an element in H, we also have to hit the inverse. So this means if we don't have subjectivity, we still will describe a whole group embedded in H. Indeed, this is something I want to discuss in more detail really soon. But in order to do that, we first have to prove the two properties a group homomorphism has as well. So the first one is if we take the neutral element in G and let's call it EG and put it into phi, we get the unique neutral element in H. So this property we can remember as the identity is sent to the identity. And to describe the second property, we want to put in an inverse. And here we want to have the same as before. It should not matter if we first apply phi and then the inverse or the other way around. This means phi of A inverse should be given as phi of A inverse. And obviously we want to have that for all A in G. So these are the two important properties that we could also have included in the definition above. However, that is not needed because we can simply prove them here. So let's start with the first one by using the properties of the identity element. This means if we use EG in the binary operation, we don't change anything. Therefore, instead of EG, we can also write EG with EG. And then we can use the property of the group homomorphism. So now our calculation is in H and there the binary operation is denoted by a star. So here we could say phi of EG squared is phi of EG again. And in fact, it turns out that such a property already defines the identity element in a group. And this is not hard to see because we can just write EH is given as an element times its inverse. So in this case, we can write phi of EG inverse times phi of EG. And exactly there, we can use our equation from above. This means instead of phi EG, we use phi EG squared. And then you might already see, the only thing we need to use now is the associativity. We can simply put the first two elements together and then we have the identity again. In other words, here we just have the identity in H times phi of EG. Therefore, on the right hand side, we simply have phi of EG and on the left hand side, EH. So exactly what we wanted to prove. A group homomorphism always sends the identity to the identity. And now this property we can use to prove our second part here. So the identity in H is given as phi of EG. And EG can always be written as A inverse times A. So this is the binary operation in G. And with the group homomorphism, we can translate that to the binary operation in H. And there we see, we put two elements together and this happens in H. And what we get out is the neutral element in H. And you know, this equation defines inverses and they are always uniquely given. Therefore, we can conclude that this element here is the inverse of that element. So in the formula, this reads phi of A inverse is given as phi of A inverse. So what you can remember here 
is that a cool polymorphism allows us to pull out the inverse sign. So with a cool polymorphism, such calculations get easier. And in the same way, you can remember that for a cool polymorphism, we can pull out the binary operation. However, please there never forget, the binary operation could change from left to right. Moreover, what we can do with cool polymorphisms in the theory of groups, I can show you with the next videos. So I really hope we meet there again and have a nice day. Bye bye.